Welcome back to a new video in which we'll see why we need abstraction in a clean architecture app. And by abstraction, I mean abstracting usually a repository that we have in our data layer that in our view model, for example, we only access that abstraction that is in the domain layer. So we don't access the data layer at all from the presentation layer. But why do we need this? Why not just calling the real repository from our presentation layer? Why exactly calling an, an abstraction in the middle? Okay, so we'll see what benefits this comes with and why we need it in a clean architecture app. Well, it comes with a bunch of benefits. Let's see them first. The first one is maintainability. Since with this abstraction, we completely isolate the presentation layer from the data layer. So they are not connected by any means. No one knows about the other one. And this means the data access logic or anything that has to do with data from databases, APIs, work manager, anything that has to do with data like shared preferences is completely isolated from the presentation in which we have our UI uh, view model. Of course, in the UI, we will show that data in the end. So how it makes our app more maintainable is that in the future, if we want to change a data source, for example, from a database to another, from an API to another one, if we don't want to use shared preferences anymore, we can just change that in the data layer and the presentation layer will not be affected because as I said, the presentation layer is not connected to the, to the data layer by any means. It only accesses the abstraction in the middle that is in the domain layer and then the repository in our data only implements that interface, which is the abstraction, okay? So if we can change things in the data layer, we can update things. If something brings in the data layer, then we can only fix it in there. And then the presentation will not be affected because they are not connected. So that's the first thing, maintainability and also scalability, which is the same, changing a data source, adding more, more data sources. For example, in the first time we only used an API, and then we want to scale our app to also have offline functionality by caching the data that we get from the API to a room database or so. So that's how we make our app more maintainable and more scalable with abstraction. Then the second thing I want to mention is flexibility because here we can easily swipe a whole repository with another one since again, the presentation does not access the data. We only access the abstraction. So, so we can create any implementation that we want and then implement that abstraction and then pass when we create an instance of our view model, for example, pass the implementation that we want. In production, we want to pass the real repository. In testing, we want to pass the testing repository. If we, for example, have different types of users like subscribed users and unsubscribed users. For subscribed users, we only want to pass the subscribed repository, for example. And for unsubscribed users, we want to provide or we want to inject the unsubscribed users repository, something like this. So all of this is good in testing and also in flexibility in our app. So these are the benefits that comes with creating these abstractions for our data sources and repositories in our data layer. We could also apply this, for example, to use cases if we need some sort of change in use cases depending on different scenarios in our app. Now let's see that in code. So in another studio project, I have the typical clean architecture structure. As you can see, I have the core package in which we have the shared components or utilities between different features. And here I have the auth feature that stands for authentication. And if you want to understand clean architecture in a real app, then check my premium course in the description in which we will build an industry level app with its own kit or backend, of course, with clean architecture, dependency injection in all the industry level skills that you would need. You can find its link in the description. Now let's continue. In this auth, I have the data, the domain and the presentation and the DI for dependency injection. I have all these layers in the data layer. I have this auth repository that simply has a login function to log me in. It returns true if I'm logged in, if, uh, if not, then it returns false. That's the repository. And then I don't have anything in domain. In presentation, I have the auth view model that takes an instance of my auth repository, which is the not the abstraction or anything, the actual implementation. And simply I have a state that is just a Boolean. When I call this function, when I'm logged in, I call this login function and then simply I return the results, whether I'm logged in or not. That's good. What's the problem here? Well, now I want to test this behavior. I want to test, do I actually log in when I want to log in? Or do I actually navigate to the home screen when I log in and all those stuff? And when testing, 
technically, I don't want to use the real implementation. Let's say here, but I have some HTTP client or so that connects to a server with some tokens and all the authentication complex stuff. I don't want that in this thing. I just want, for example, to say, yes, you are logged in. So I can see, do I actually navigate to the, to the next screen? Or when I say you are not logged in, do, do I actually show the error or something like that? telling the user you have some incorrect password or so. So that's all in testing. And in testing, I don't really want to do a real authentication. So what we do is we want to create some sort of, of course, this is happening in the testing environment right here. So in testing packages, not in, in the uh, production right here. What we want to have is something like fake auth repository that actually doesn't need application. Let's say that one needed application, but this one doesn't need it. And we can just also remove this. And this one just, test authentication, something like this. We don't have a real authentication or anything like that. And simply it is that we could also remove this. It returns true or false based on what we want to see. Okay. But now I have two different repositories that make me authenticate. Now, what I want to test is technically my view model. So I need to create an instance of my view model. And the problem is any instance I create of this view model, must have this auth repository, which is the real implementation. And with this, I completely make my app not scalable, not maintainable, and not even testable because I can't test with this real implementation. And if I have a different type of user, like a subscribed user, I cannot pass some sort of a subscribed auth repository, something like that. You know, if those users are from Europe and I want to show different things for users in Europe, I cannot pass some Europe auth repository or something like that. And for Asia, a different one. I can't do that. I only have this one and I don't want this. So what's the solution? We can come here and rename this one. Let's call it, for example, implementation like this. So auth repository implementation, just renaming it. And then I want to go to my domain layer, create a new interface called now auth repository like this. Okay, in this one, I'm going to have one function that is, it says suspend font login that takes an email and a password and it returns boolean. So now this is now an interface. And what I want to do is go back to my auth repository implementation and implement that auth repository like this, import it. And maybe that's not what I want, but import this one. And they can just add overwrite and I can also go to my fake auth repository, add override, and then make this one also implements my auth repository like this. Great. Now I can go to my view model and instead of using this auth implementation, and since I want to completely isolate my presentation layer, which is right now where I am in, from my data layer, which this one comes from. So I want to delete this like this. And then here, I want to use my auth repository like this. I could also name this one auth repository. So now I, what I access is my domain layer, which means my presentation layer is completely isolated from the data layer. And whenever I create a new instance of this view model, I can just pass the implementation I want. So let's say in our dependency injection, we use coin or dagger here, whatever. Let's say we have some auth module, something like this. And then that's just an object. You just say it's an object. And then let's just say we have a fun provide auth view model, for example, like this. We don't need application. And this returns our auth view model. This returns our auth view model. If we, for example, use coin, that could be something like a view model or anyway. So we'll create an instance right now. We can pass whatever we want. In this case, for example, this is the production. We want to pass our auth view model implementation. We need application, of course, with the dependency injection library, we already can just pass application. If we use Quinn, then that's going to be good, something like this. When testing, let's say we have another module that is going to be somewhere right here in testing. Then that's going to be test of module. And that is going to be my test or what did I call it? I don't remember, fake, okay. So I called it fake auth repository. That doesn't take anything. As you can see now, I created a different instance of my view model and I passed the implementation I want. So here I could write return and return. So this is for production and this is for testing. And let's say I have some user from a different country here, as I said. So let's say I want a specific implementation from people in Africa, for example. So I could just copy this and call it 
Africa. I'm just trying now to demonstrate to you how this works. Now, this is for only for people in some countries in Africa or whatever that is. I can just, for example, copy this again, paste it, call it Africa Auth module, for example, and then it just passed that Africa Auth module implementation. And this just depends on what scenario I am in. In testing, let me just do this. I want to have the fake one. In, for people in Africa, I want to have this one. For people in Europe, another one. For, for people in Asia, it depends. For subscribed people, I want this one. For unsubscribed people, I want another one. So I'm just flexible to pass whatever I want. That's the big advantage of this abstraction. And then the other thing is that, let's say, I don't even have all these, but then I only have one repository, which is this one. And here I'm using some API A. And I decided that I want to use now a different API. I can just come here and then simply implement the new API and return true or false in the end. And then our view model will never be affected about that. It's just the same. It's receiving what it needs, which is true or false. The implementation doesn't matter to the view model. So these are the advantages that we get from abstracting the data sources and repositories that we have in our data. Of course, this abstraction design pattern is not something that is a must to use in all scenarios or so, but it's really good for the advantages that it comes with, as I said, making our app maintainable, scalable, testable, flexible, and all those stuff. And if you want to build an industry-level app that uses screen architecture, dependency injection, and see the real benefits of all these things that I mentioned in abstraction in more advanced concepts and also build in KTOR backends, then check out my premium course that you will find in the description. Also, support me by leaving a like to this video, subscribing to this channel. So see you in the next video. Bye.